The following describes cleaning of each part of the oil path of the filling system. After powering the machine on, ensure all heaters are off by clicking the toggle on each heater from the operation screen. Start with a clean and empty reservoir from the clean in place procedure. Disconnect the nitrogen quick connector and power temperature connectors. Next, unscrew the four thumb screws that hold the chamber cover in place. Set the screws and the chamber cover aside. Next, use a two and a half millimeter hexagonal driver to remove the two M3 by 25 millimeter screws which secure the syringe clamp. Then remove the clamp and set it aside with its screws. Next, remove the two M3 by 12 millimeter screws which secure the valve to the pump housing and set those screws aside. Using your thumb and forefinger, loosen the syringe plunger thumb screw at the left side of the syringe until it is dangling. This is captive in the pump slider and cannot be removed. From the advanced screen, click charge under the pump section to move the pump slider back. This will allow you to remove the syringe and valve from the pump by pulling straight out towards the operator. Disconnect the syringe from the valve body by rotating counterclockwise when viewed from the plunger end of the syringe, carefully pull the plunger out of the syringe body and place both pieces into a beaker of 99% isopropyl alcohol. Using the 10 millimeter open-ended wrench, loosen the threaded stainless steel barb adapters and remove both PTFE lines from the valve body. Place the valve body into the beaker with the syringe body, syringe plunger, and 99% isopropyl alcohol. Wipe the stainless steel, barbed insert, and compression fittings on the PTFE with a Kim wipe and alcohol. Remove the reservoir from its holder. Loosen the tri-clamp with a torque tool or screwdriver. Remove the clamp, bulkhead, and seal to access the inside. Clean all internal parts with Kim wipes and alcohol. Disconnect the compression fitting on the bottom of the bowl reducer with a 916 open-ended wrench and place it in the beaker with the syringe parts, valve, and isopropyl alcohol. Using the needle nose pliers, carefully loosen and remove the needle from the lure lock heat block by turning the base counterclockwise if you're looking up from the end of the needle. Place the needle in the beaker with the valve in the syringe. Using the two millimeter hexagonal driver, carefully loosen the three screws that hold the heat block together and set aside the screws and the top of the heat block. Next, remove the PTFE assembly that connects the needle to the valve and place it in the beaker with the other components to soak in alcohol. If no ultrasonic bath is available, let these components soak for at least 24 hours, occasionally rotating the valve port selector 360 degrees at a time. If an ultrasonic bath is available, place the top bulkhead, Viton gasket, valve and lure lock components into the ultrasonic bath with Alkanox and warm water in the quantity specified by the manufacturers. Sonicate for at least one hour, heat optional. Rinse all parts well with clean water, rinse with alcohol, and let air dry overnight. Assemble in the reverse order as removed and ensure that all connectors are tight especially the lure lock connections between the syringe and valve and needle and PTFE. Carefully reinsert the syringe plunger into the syringe body by pushing along the direction of movement. Pushing the plunger at an angle or twisting it may break the syringe glass. Twist the syringe body onto the valve body until the lure lock is fully seated. There will be a gap of only about one millimeter between the silver face of the syringe body and the black housing of the valve when it is fully tightened. Attach the needle PTFE assembly to the lower port of the valve body, finger tight, then fully tighten with a 10 millimeter wrench until the O-ring and the threaded adapter begins to bulge slightly. Next, attach the reservoir PTFE assembly to the upper port of the valve body, finger tight, then fully tighten with a 10 millimeter wrench until the O-ring and the threaded adapter begins to bulge slightly. Reinsertion of the syringe and valve assembly must be done gently in order to avoid damaging the syringe glass. Reconnecting the syringe plunger to the pump translation stage will require the syringe key to be aligned to the translation stage so that it may slide in. Ensure the key is aligned prior to seating the syringe valve assembly by gripping the syringe glass and plunger. 
do not attempt to align the plunger key after the valve assembly is installed. The port selector on the rear of the valve must be aligned to the slot inside the valve mount. If the syringe translation stage is not still at its charged position, go to the advanced screen and click charge under the pump section. Next, push the syringe and valve straight into the mount until fully seated. Reinsert the M3 by 12 millimeter hexagonal screws into the valve body and tighten using the two and a half millimeter hexagonal driver. Do not over tighten these screws. The threads in the pump housing may strip. Stripped mounting holes will prevent normal operation and cannot be repaired. With the syringe plunger key aligned to the pump translation stage, click reinitialize under the pump section of the advanced tab to move the pump translation stage into place at the rear of the syringe plunger. Reattach the thumb screw, which secures the syringe plunger to the pump translation stage. Place the syringe clamp back on top of the syringe in the proper orientation. It will only fit one way. Then reinsert the M3 by 25 millimeter screws and gently tighten with a two and a half millimeter hexagonal driver. Ensure the syringe retention clamp is tight enough by clicking cycle pump from the advanced screen several times. If it's too loose, the syringe will rotate and pull slightly out of the syringe housing upon charging, and then rotate slightly on dispense. Retighten the syringe connection to the valve by hand, then tighten the syringe retention clamp screws more with the 2.5 mm hexagonal driver. When tightening the syringe retention clamp, watch the neoprene strip seated inside of the clamp. Stop tightening when you see it touch the glass body of the syringe. Over tightening of the syringe retention clamp can crack the syringe. Improperly seated syringe, valve, or plunger can also result in a broken syringe upon pump cycling. Damages caused by improperly installing the syringe, valve, or plunger are not covered by the standard warranty. Next, we're going to reassemble the lure lock heat block. First, place the PTFE and lure lock barb adapter into the slotted and grooved space in the heat block. Seat the red needle heater and black thermistor wire ends into their respective slots. Hold all three in place while putting the heat block cover back on. Using the two millimeter hexagonal driver, start by inserting the two screws on the right. If needed, you can adjust the placement of the heater and thermistor wires by pulling or pushing from within the pump chamber. Insert the final screw and ensure all three are hand tight until you feel resistance. Do not over tighten. Using the needle nose pliers, reinsert the needle into the heat block, turning clockwise if looking up from the end of the needle. Reattach the pump chamber cover with four thumb screws. Replace the Viton gasket, bulkhead, and tri-clamp to the top of the reservoir. Place the reservoir in its holder, ensuring the power cord goes through the slot on the rear. Reconnect the compression fitting on the bottom of the bowl reducer with a 9 16 open-ended wrench. Reconnect the reservoir power cord to the jet fueler. At this point, the deep clean on your jet fueler should be complete and you are good to power it off or load with oil to continue dispense operations.